before we start this video, a large thank you to Local Idiot. <laughs> That's a funny name. Gail, Mattia, Billy Joe Saunders, Nabtech, Saba, and Anthony for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a special thank you to Mike Harden Games for their immense support this month on Patreon. Okay, guys. So, if we go into the game here now, you'll see you got this new model all updated. All the transforms are fixed. So, if I actually go into the game now and I press the two-hand button, and again, these are the exact same transforms as before, you'll see that I actually hold the sword correctly. And when I say same transforms as before, I mean this is the same transforms on the sword's hand, uh, right hand and left hand IK. So, I've actually updated the model so the transforms on the model themselves are fixed. So, now watch, when I grab the left arm now and move it, you'll see before, I'll put a video, uh, I'll put a clip of the old one alongside this one. It was more snappy. Look how smooth this is. I can go up or down however far I want, whereas before it kind of snapped up and down and didn't really go where I wanted it to go, now it's perfect because the transforms on the model are all correct. So sometimes the problem can be your model, uh, not the code, especially when it has to do with animations. So now that that is fixed, we do have a problem, however. Um, that's if I actually attack with this weapon. You'll see, you might have caught that if you're quick enough taking a look, but I'll, uh, I'll swing and I'll pause the game for you. So we'll take a swing and we'll pause. And what you're going to see is our hand is actually going through our face. That's not good. And that's because the hand IK is so grabby, it's, it wants to stay in the exact position when we swing our weapon. And we don't want that. Uh, most of the times, you just want it on your idle position, and you want to let it go when you're attacking, so you can have a bit more freedom with the movement. So right here on our erase hand IK function, we're going to add a couple things. On the character animator manager, let's first add a bool. We're going to call the bool hand IK weights reset. We're going to initialize that at false. Now if we go down here to where it says reset weight to zero, we're actually calling this function in a couple places in the last video, but let's just say hand IK weights reset is equal to true. And then we're gonna say right hand constraint dot data dot target position weight is equal to zero, not one, not 10, zero, that was my bad. Then we're gonna say right hand constraint dot data dot target rotation weight is equal to zero. And then we're going to do the same for the left. But first we're gonna say if right hand constraint dot data dot target does not equal null, then perform this action. Otherwise you will get an error if you're not two handing your weapon or the weapon does not have any um, constraint data or a target for the hand IK. Okay, so let's do that for the left hand as well. And then we'll have part one complete. Now we actually want to basically reset our hand IK anytime we're performing any kind of action, like an attack or a roll, basically whenever we're not idle. Now let's make another virtual void here. We're gonna call this check hand IK weight. And this function is gonna be used to basically check to see if we have to reset our hand IK after we leave an action like a roll or an attack. And we're gonna to want to know the right hand IK target information, the left hand IK target information, and if we are actually two handing our weapon, because we're not gonna use the two hand IK if we're not two handing our weapon. Next, we're gonna say if character manager dot is interacting, we're gonna return. We don't wanna do this or reset it mid action. So we, then we're gonna say if hand IK weights reset, so if we need to reset it, we're gonna say false. And then we're going to basically change all the values to one. First, we're going to check to make sure our uh, right hand constraint data is not null. And then we're just going to change our right hand constraint uh, target position and rotation weight to zero, uh, one rather. And we're going to do the same with the left hand. Uh, I just noticed too, down below here, the left hand is actually at a value of one, not zero. That is my mistake. Make sure this is zero. We want to reset that there. Okay, that looks good. Now we're gonna also say right here, right hand constraint dot data dot target is equal to right hand IK dot transform. And down here we'll do the same thing but for the left hand. So basically now we wanna call this function on some form of fixed update functionality. And basically we're gonna know that whenever we need to reset our uh, hand IK, we're gonna do that when an action ends. So on the character manager base class, let's go to that and let's call the character animator manager variable and let's call the character weapon slot manager variable. We're then going to use a virtual void awake and a virtual void fixed update. And that's very important. Make sure it's a protected virtual void awake and a protected virtual void fixed update, not fixed joint. So on the awake, we're just using this to call our um, animator 
our character animator manager and our character weapon slot manager. Now on the fixed update, we're actually going to call that function from the animator manager um, on every fixed frame. And it won't do anything if you don't need to reset your weapons hand IK. So it won't do anything at all. But the second it does need to reset your weapons hand IK, it will fire that function one time. And then it will uh, reset the bool that indicates we need to reset our hand IK. And then your character should go back to holding the, the sword with two hands as per normal. So here on the awake method, I'm just going to say character animator manager and the character weapon slot manager both equal to get component because they're on the same game object as these components. Uh, and then down in the fixed update, I'm simply going to say um, character weapon slot manager or character animator manager, sorry, my bad, uh, dot check hand IK weight. And then we're going to pass our character weapon slot manager dot right hand IK and left hand IK targets. But we need to make these public. So come to the character weapon slot manager and make both of these public and then pass them both, and then simply pass your is two-handing bool, and you'll be good to go. So what this is going to do is basically every single time we um, leave any kind of attack event or action event when we're not interacting anymore, it will check this logic, and we'll reset our character's uh, two-handing if need be. So um, we're not done, though, because we just actually use a virtual void uh, and a virtual awake on a base class that has other classes using regular voids and regular wakes. So let's also go to the character stats manager and let's let's call upon the character animator manager uh, variable. And down here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use a virtual awake. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to check when we get damaged. And all we want to do is basically just reset our hand IK. Um, so while we get damaged, we won't grab onto the sword and hold it in one place. We'll play the damage animation normally without any influence um, of how we're holding our weapon. So I'm just going to call the character animator manager on awake. And then I'm going to go down here to take damage and just right after um, if his dead return, just simply say character animator manager dot erase hand IK. Now, again, you don't need, like I said before, you actually don't need any of this uh, hand IK stuff if you have perfect animations. But if you're trying to make animations more modular and work with more weapons, then this, this is where this stuff comes in handy. And it's really, really useful and very easy to set up. So next, we're going to go to the player manager and the enemy manager, and then the player stats manager and the enemy stats manager. And as I said, we're doing this because we just actually used uh, virtual functions on a base class where we already have their... Um, the classes that derive from this using regular functions. So we need to change our regular um, awakes and fixed updates now to a override void, protected override void. And make sure at the top of it now, you also say base.awake. We do this because we want to call the logic of the class we're deriving from and the logic of the class that's um, overriding this. So that way we get both functionalities. Do that for the player and the enemy manager. Um, change it to protected override awake and say base dot awake. You're then going to want to also go to um, the enemy and player stats manager and do the exact same thing. Over time, you're going to see we're going to be using these base classes a lot more because they make everything so much uh, more simple, especially when we have the enemy and the player sharing so much data and using the same functionality and logic. Um, when that's done, we're not completely done yet we have to go over to the player locomotion manager and look for where we're rolling, backstepping or jumping. And right under that, just simply say player animator manager dot erase hand IK for weapon. Uh, it's really that simple. There's not very many actions uh, in these kinds of projects, thankfully, because you can only have as many actions really as, as you have um, buttons to perform them or areas to perform them. You could also do this um, in theory at the, the input manager or input handler. Oh, and also don't forget to go to your player manager and enemy manager and do the fixed update as well. Again, you need to say protected virtual uh, or override void fixed update and make sure you're saying base dot fixed update and do the exact same thing here for the enemy manager as well. Okay, that looks good. And I think I forgot to say base dot fixed update. Yes, I did. So we're going to do that right now. Now, in theory, this should be enough right now to make our um, our weapon reset at the proper time and make everything look nice. So I'm going to jump into the game now and see we're holding our weapon and we're swinging and yes, it does not look like garbage when we swing and I'll pause the frame for you right now so you can see it as well just in a second. Okay, as you can see here, my arm is on in my face and if you look at the target position weights and the target rotation weights, they are both at zero. So the weights turn to zero when we start swinging our sword and then they reset when we leave the action. That is what we want and that is really, really fantastic um, 
for just using animations that don't exactly fit your weapon but come really close, you can get away with a lot with that. Now, on our enemy, let's actually go and copy the rig layer component from our player and paste it under our enemy as a child. Make sure you reset the transform of it and make sure you're actually going down into the right hand and left hand and dragging in the enemy's root because if not, it will have the exact same name as the player if you're like me and you're using the same kind of uh, model but it will reference the player's root, not the enemy's root that you just pasted on. We're doing this so we can give our enemy the ability to use um, two-handed IK on weapons as well. We want to give our enemy the ability to do that if they're two-handing a weapon. After you do that, you're going to want to add the rig builder component to your enemy and uh, drag in the rig layer that we just pasted. There we go. Let's add this right here and just drag this in like that. Okay, that looks good. Should be good to go. Oh, and don't forget to drag in the left hand and right hand constraints on the enemy's animator manager. Now if I go into the game and you see I get hit by the enemy, you see I play the damage animation, I don't actually still grab onto my sword with two hands, I release it just for the time being, and then when I'm done being damaged, I grab it again with my two hands. So that looks really good, and that's working as expected. Now, there is a bug we're going to fix real quick. Some people never had the ability to backstab more than one time, and I actually encountered this in my solo project. You'll see if I go to backstab here like this, I actually can't do it again, and I, I didn't know why it was happening sometimes and not others. I actually narrowed it down to a really weird bug, so you can see here I can't backstab. I'm going to show you what it is. It has nothing to do with the code. It's actually the inputs themselves. Um, if you have a controller plugged in at the same time as you're using a keyboard, what happens is, for some reason, you can only actually activate uh, this event one time. What you have to do is change it from a button to a pass-through. So change the critical attack from a button to a pass-through, uh, close that and save it, and... Um, I don't remember the logical reason as to why this happens because I just skimmed the article and the documentation. But now if I go over here, as you can see, um, I can just repetitively backstab all I want. So we can go one and then we can switch our lock on target and we can do two and we can switch our lock on target and we can do three and you get it. We can do four. So uh, this apparently only happens when you're using the multiple input setup of a controller and a keyboard. But this is what remedies it. So there you go, guys. All fixed. Now, we're actually going to tackle a bug where we can still use our inputs after the player has died. We simply go to our input manager, and on tick input, we say if player status manager is dead, we end it with a return. Now, we're going to fix a bug with the camera rotations. I made a silly mistake here a long time ago, and I instead of multiplying by the delta, I divided by the delta. Um, this was done a very, very long time ago, and I actually did not notice it, but a commenter was nice enough to put it out. His name is The Game Mechanic. Thank you, my friend. It's actually supposed to be multiplied by the delta, not divided by the delta. Otherwise, you get some very weird behavior when the frames of the game increase, as he so rightfully pointed out. So if you save that now, you're actually going to have to go back into the game and crank up the values for the, um, I believe, the pivot speed and the look speed. We're going to take a look real soon, though. Just minimize this. And We'll go into the game and check out the inspector. Yeah, so the look speed um, cranked up to about, I'm just going to try 250, um, 25 first. You see you get a little bit of movement. Let me crank it up again, 150, and it goes a bit faster. You want those values, in my opinion, at least at probably at least 250 or 200, and you'll be good to go. But this will fix the odd behavior that some people um, were having at a uh, a lot higher frames and the game or the camera rotations will behave more normally now. So again, thank you, the game mechanic for pointing that out, my friend. That was very helpful of you. Okay, guys, that is it for this episode, this episode of housekeeping. If you're enjoying the series, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe. It genuinely helps my channel out so, so much. And if you're feeling like a super champion, check out my Patreon below. And as always, guys, a special thank you to my patrons. It's because of you guys, I get to keep doing this. We got archery coming up on the docket real soon. Stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next one.